This is a review of a cartridge from Origin Live. It's a moving iron cartridge called the Aladdin Mark II. And you might be asking yourself, moving iron? Well, moving iron cartridges are intriguing things. The magnet inside stays still, as does the coil that sits alongside. What moves is the iron bit fixed to the cantilever. This induces tiny voltages within the coils. The result, firstly, the output is pretty high, so you'd use this cartridge as you would a moving magnet, and that means a load of 47 kilo ohms. So moving magnets are sort of halfway house, or that's how they like to see themselves anyway. They try and give the performance of a moving coil and the ease of use and setup of a moving magnet. Now the Aladdin 2 arrives in this box, a little wooden box with a nice little lid. Let me bring it to camera, I'll show you. So there is the box and inside you can see the cartridge. So before we get to the sound tests, let's take a closer look at the Aladdin Mark II. But actually, just for now, this is a close-up of one of my reference turntables, in this case, the Avid Acutus. You could say it's a study in Chrome because there's lots of it. In fact, you might be able to, hello, can you see my hand there waving around? This is one of my uh, reference turntables. On the right, just around here, mark one finger there, we have the Aladdin cartridge. That is hooked up to an SME4. And here's a side view of the tone arm, just focusing on the SME4 just for a second. And there is the Origin Live Aladdin Mark II in place. Okay, let's get a little bit closer to the cartridge in question. And as you can see, the cartridge, the Aladdin Mark II, has its stylus guard in place. It's a simple guard to attach and detach. You just clip the back here, move that off, and hey presto. And there is the front of the stylus guard. Now it's pushed back at a slightly strange angle to the camera, but you can see the external power supply for the Avid Acutus. You can see the Avid logo on the left and that whopping great big letter A cut into the front fascia. Double speed with play in the center. So let's start that. You may hear a little groan actually from the acutus. This is the double belts getting hold of the extraordinarily heavy platter and forcing it along with all its might. Here we go. I don't know if you could hear that. I'm not quite sure at this moment as I'm recording, but you may have heard that uh, as if it's waking up from a deep sleep. Let's look at the Aladdin Mark II in action and I can tell you a little bit more about it in terms of techie details. So here we have the Aladdin Mark II in action. I'm not going to play what's on the vinyl because I'll be hit by a copyright strike from YouTube. So silence is golden on this one. The cartridge itself has been manufactured by Soundsmith in the USA and it's derived from the Zephyr design actually. The main change here from the earlier Mark I, and if you want to see a review of the Mark I, I'll post a link below in the description. But the main difference between the Mark I and the Mark II is the aluminium alloy cantilever. And that's the same one that you can find in the latest Soundsmith. How do you pronounce this? Pao? 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 I'll put that below. You can see it yourself. I'll also put a link for the Soundsmith Pao? Pao? below in the description too, if you'd like to see that. But it has the same cantilever. So what does this cantilever bring to the party? Well, it's stiffness basically, but targeted at, and I quote, the most critical parts of the sonic spectrum. Hanging off the end of the cantilever is a low mass, high profile contact line diamond, which apparently has been developed specifically for a new generation of cartridges that include the Aladdin Mark II. Now here's a, another view of the Aladdin, but you can see the screws on the top there. And one of the things that really irritates me, especially as a reviewer, because I obviously am installing and uninstalling cartridges left, right and centre, one of the things that really irritates me is the hated fiddly screw nut combination 
that tends to be popular still when you're fitting the cartridge chassis to the arm. I'm not a fan, as I say. Hence, I heartily welcome the addition of screw threads within the Aladdin Mark II chassis. Other technologies you'll find within the chassis here is something called Dynamic Energy Management System. This is a Soundsmith development and it was initially introduced into the high-end Sesoro cartridge. DEMS is all about ridding the cartridge of vibrations out of its composite body shell. The cartridge you're looking at now weighs 10.25 grams and there's a tracking force of 2 grams. So, how does this cartridge actually sound? So, sound tests. I began the sound tests with a bit of folk. Don't often use folk in my sound tests, and I don't really know why not. So, I'm going to make a start now. I'm going to use a classic folk album by a British band called Griffin. They ended up being more prog rock, really, ultimately. But they began as a folk group, and they had their debut album released in 1973 on the Transatlantic label. As a reviewing tool, this album is ideal because it's packed with varying instruments, different tones and resonances that emanated from the likes of, well, bassoons, varying percussion, recorders, mandolins, and even a crumb horn. In play, I found the sonic response quite fascinating from the Aladdin Mark II. It was supremely focused and on the ball in how it presented music. There wasn't, as you sometimes find with very decent cartridges, a noticeable infusion of air and space in this music. With some cartridges, it sounds like the band has moved out into the garden instead of being stuck in the studio. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the Aladdin Mark II didn't offer such a presentation, and I did wonder if that might hamper dynamic reach in some way. But after listening for, ooh, two minutes, that proved not to be the case. For example, on the first track, there is a subtly hit gong, or some gong-like instrument of indeterminate parentage. On the Aladdin Mark II, the after effects of the gong strike not only extended to its expected length, but it carried on. So someone in the band hit this gong, and the gong did its thing, as gongs do, and then there was a pause as the gong decayed, other instruments started, they carried on, but behind those other instruments, that gong still resonated. You could still hear it decaying. And that's what got it for me. That's the key. That was the key point in this review. And I thought, there's quality and then there are cartridges. And basically for that, I was glad I'd paid for my ticket. If I had heard that effect in a demo room, I'd have had my wallet out there and then. So there was air and space, but set within a more realistic, as I found out later, area. One that the studio created and one that was not infused by any cartridge in some sort of second-hand manner. Realism, therefore, seemed heightened with the Aladdin Mark II. As did focus. My goodness, the instruments here were prim, proper, neat, tidy and quite nimble on their feet. The effects were to provide music that was both trim and fleet of foot. Nothing dragged. The mids were on point here without any smearing, yet dynamic reach was extended and impressive. Noise was also noticeable for being low. I had to top up the gain on my preamp, just a couple of clicks, but those two clicks were two clicks too far for the Mark I and wouldn't have warranted that sort of tweak. The Mark II demanded it. Later in this album, the Griffin album, Varying vocal harmonies were found to be a delight. The Aladdin Mark II translated vocal textures beautifully. That is, the cartridge projected the character of the singer. You felt there was a real human behind this voice. Now I have a soft spot for Greenslade's Time and Tide, so back I went to that. It provided a more dynamic contrast to the folk from Griffin, and I played a track called Animal Farm. Here, bass was both tight but also propulsive. It certainly didn't hang about. The pace from this track was both exciting and vigorous 
in terms of its presentation. There was real drive in this music that suited the rocking nature of the arrangements and the forceful manner of the lead vocal. And there was something else that grabbed my attention, and that was the layered manner of the soundstage. The area around the stereo image was very busy indeed, but never cluttered or confused. A host of instruments were gathered, but the ear could make out each and every tap or thwack or string pluck without any sense of masking occurring. Again, very impressive. And that soundstage was encouragingly wide and expansive. Percussion frolicked and gambled among the long grass at the extremes of this soundstage, but the transparency it exhibited merely added to the rich nature of the music. So what do I think of the Aladdin Mark II? Well, the combination of clarity and detail in the mids, the drive and energy around the lower frequencies, but also the low noise and focus across the soundstage as a whole was completely engaging and threatened to ruin my entire working day. Because I ended up enjoying this review a bit too much and ended up thinking, should I just take a day off? I'm just having a nice time here listening to music. Uh, no, but I nearly did. I nearly took a day off because of this cartridge. That's how good it was. So look, if you ever get into a subject of hi-fi cartridges with your friend or colleague and they say to you, why should I bother looking at moving iron? Then this, this my friend, this is the reason. The Origin Live Aladdin 2. And the price? Well, it verges on the lower end of mid-range. £1,139. That's how much it's going to cost. But actually, listening to this cartridge, hearing what it can do, realising its capabilities, this cartridge offers great value for money, even at that price. And that's me done, folks. If you want to see my reference system that I used for this review, look in the description and that's joined by other links to social media platforms I'm on, including my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join, of course. There's also my Patreon page, which features a whole host of exclusive editorial. Now, I've only just posted some new editorial on the Patreon page as I'm talking to you now. I posted it yesterday and it includes, oddly enough, a cartridge buyer's guide of a more budget nature, I must say, but even so, it's there, and I put it on yesterday. There's also a music memorabilia section on there, and there's some archive stuff that's never seen the light of day on social media before, but it's on my page. So check that out, link below. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Thank you for keeping going right till the end of this video. Also, I want to thank you very much for subscribing. It's much appreciated. And if you can join me on the next video, I will see you then. So, bye-bye for now. Thank you.